Pet battles are based on the popular video game series Pokemon, although pretty much everyone knows that considering Pokemon's popularity. There are some pretty big differences though. In Pokemon, each type has multiple type advantages and disadvantages, and wow, there is only one for each. In Pokemon, you fight in teams of six with four moves to choose from. In WoW, you fight in teams of three with three moves to choose from. In Pokemon, you have a huge roster of moves to learn or teach your Pokemon. In WoW, your pets can only learn six moves total. All in all, pet battles are an extremely simplified version of Pokemon. There are some pets that are only available during certain weather conditions, times of year, or times of day. The Silithid Hatchlings are only available during Sandstorms and Tanaris. The Karaji Gardlings are only available in the summer, the Snowy Owl only in the winter, and the Restless Shadeling can only be caught in the early morning. There are unique special abilities that only certain rare pets have, as a way to make it worth getting them. Some of these special abilities are not all that great, but some are downright overpowered. One of the more notable examples of this is the Haunt ability in the Unborn Valk. Before Warlords, only the Valk had this ability, which is one of the strongest dots in the game, gives you a free switch, and makes you immune to AoE damage. All in one, the Unborn Valk is a rare spawn at Northrend, and its spawn locations are still camped to this day. Even after the inclusion of the Ghastly Kid, an easier to get pet with the Haunt ability. Also, another little tidbit on Haunt. If you're going against an undead pet who's in its turn of immunity, and you have your Haunt off cooldown, and you're faster than your opponent, you can use Haunt to dodge damage for the turn, because it will count you as dead, but then bring you back to life immediately at the end of the turn, without making Haunt go on cooldown. The Celestial Tournament is the hardest PvE challenge you can do in pet battling. You must defeat three tamers who all have legendary quality pets, as well as the four Celestial boss who take 50% less damage from everything, without being able to heal or revive your pets. You also need to have at least 15 max level pets to even enter. But that's probably not enough pets to complete the tournament unless you were very lucky and just happened to level up the best pets to counter the bosses on your first go. Undead pets have the best racial out of all the pets. The undead racial allows you to come back to life and be immune for one turn before dying again. Why does this make the racial so good? Well, say you have one health left and your opponent is faster than you. All they would have to do is hit you with any damaging move and you'd die without being able to do anything in that round. The undead racial would make it so that you would survive that turn, get off your attack, and then have a free turn after that to get off another ability. Essentially, giving you two more rounds to attack where all other pets would have just died. The mechanical racial is nearly as strong as it allows you to come back to life with 20% health. But 20% health is usually low enough to just get killed by a basic attack. And if you're slower than your opponent, you only get one free turn to attack after coming back alive, instead of two like the undeads. Pets are separated by pet breeds. All pets gain extra stats as they level up, in addition to their baseline stats. There are only four stats in pet battling, health, power, speed, and balance, which is just a combination of the other three. Pets are then given a combination of two of these stats, which we call their breed. Let's say for example we have a power power type pet. That just means it'll use all of its extra stat points in power and nothing else. Here's where it gets tricky. Let's take that same pet, only it's a power speed breed. If it had 20 points to spend, it would only spend 18 of them, 9 into power and speed each, and just not use the remaining 2 points. While the pure breed power power pet would have used all 20 points in power. This means half breeds actually just straight up have less stats overall than pure breeds. But it's even worse for balanced pets. Say you take the same exact pet from the previous two examples, only it's a balance balance type. It will only put 5 points each into power, speed, and health, only using 15 points out of 20. So to sum it up, pure breeds have the most stats, half breeds have slightly lower, and balance have the lowest. And the only way to see breeds is with an add-on. The Terrible Turnip and the Molten Corgi are the only two pets in game with an ability that will not allow you to kill the pet you're attacking, Super Bark and Weakening Blow. These abilities are very useful for catching pets in the wild, seeing as you don't have to worry about accidentally killing lower level pets. While not specifically stated in the abilities, there are some attacks that will hit targets who are using an unhittable ability in the air with abilities like Liftoff, or underground with abilities like Dive or Burrow. Using an ability like Meteor Strike or Launch allows you to hit other pets in the air with similar abilities like Liftoff or Proto Strike. Quake and Whirlpool can hit underground targets like pets using Submerge, Dive, or Burrow. 
Frogs can perma-polymorph if the stars align. Frogs have an ability called Frog Kiss, which has a 25% chance every time it hits to polymorph the target for one turn. Polys essentially work like stuns in PvP. It's not broken on damage and prevents them from attacking. After being subject to a hard CC like a stun, poly, or sleep effect, you get a two turn resilient buff which makes you immune to CCs for two turns. The thing is though, the buff only gets applied when the CC wears off, so it's entirely possible for Frog Kiss ability to reapply the polymorph on the already polymorph target, over and over until the pet dies. It's a low chance, but possible. The highest I've ever seen was three turns in a row, and that was done to me. In the footage you're watching, I got two back-to-back -back polys in the match, which is pretty rare in itself. The ability, Flurry, is very unique compared to its counterparts. The ability allows you to hit one to two times for minor damage, plus an additional time if you're faster than your opponent, for a grand total of three potential hits. The thing is though, there are about ten other abilities that do exactly the same thing. Word for word, damage for damage, only of sometimes different ability type damage. There is even another ability that does the same thing and damage of the same type of damage, Flank, which also does critter damage just like Flurry. So why is Flurry unique? Well, because it's coded differently. Flurry has the potential to hit three times. Each time it's going to hit, the game rolls an in-game die to see if it will hit or not all three times, in addition to the rolls to see if it will do the extra hit or not. The thing is though, the ability has a 100% chance to hit, so you'd never know it worked this way until you were debuffed with the hit reduction ability. Also, every single other multi-hit ability does not work this way. All other ones simply roll a dice once to see if it will hit, then rolls the other metaphorical dice to see if it will hit extra times. This seems like not such a big deal until you take the popular PvP ability decoy into consideration. Decoy is an ability that blocks two attacks on an eight round cooldown. Since it blocks two attacks, it essentially gives the user a free attack of taking no damage, if you take into account the turn it took to use the ability. It also forces the opponent to actually attack you twice, since if your opponent uses turns to set up defensive abilities or heals, those are turns that decoy stays in play, and the pet has protection. One of the most popular pets in PvP uses this ability, and properly timed decoys can win you games, or just simply using it on cooldown. Now, this is where Flurry comes in. Since Decoy can only block two attacks, and Flurry has the potential to hit three times, it can eat up two of the blocks and still hit one additional time in the same turn, seeing as it does three small attacks. Every single other multi-hit move would simply stop on the first block and not continue, because of the way they are coded to only roll its hit chance once, making Flurry the only multi-hit move in the game a Decoy Breaker. It's called this because Flurry can take out a Decoy in one turn, where other multi-hit abilities would take two. Not only can it take it out in one turn, but it can also still do some damage in that turn that it takes it out, while the other multi-hit moves would just be blocked for two turns of doing zero damage. But on top of being a decoy breaker, it's also critter damage, which does extra damage to undeads, the most popular type of pet in PvP. This is why Flurry is the best multi-hit ability in the game, and the reason pets with the ability are better than others and a big reason why rabbits are some of the best pets in PvP.